we will stand. Ruthlessly removed from the lands of their birth, brought here against their will, our ancestors chose to survive, though the days they endured were deadly. Through centuries of degradation, they kept on choosing to root themselves in the soil of a legacy that could not be wrenched from them, a memory of how to stand in the earth of their humanity, to hold their footing in the ground of love that sustains everything. They lifted their voices with tenacity and determination. We shall not, we shall not be moved. We shall not, we shall not be moved. Like a tree planted by the water, we shall not be moved. We have chanted those words in our spirits over generations, longing for freedom for a place where we could feel the earth throbbing beneath our feet and release the bone-deep trepidations buried in us by centuries of terror. We sang. We sang. We sang against the lynchings of clansmen, southern sheriffs, and other guardians of society. Moving north, we believed. We believed, ballot in hand, that we would join the ranks of the free. And we sang, we kept on singing. Those words resounded 50 years ago against hosings and dogs and billy clubs with our blood running in the streets and in the jails. In the aftermath of assassinations and other horrors, we retreated into the solace and consolation of those words and we found the courage to move on, to keep on moving on. Now, here in our city, Detroit, distinguished by its reliable and genius workers, its brilliant political theories, theorists, organizers, and visionaries who have led the nation, by its creative geniuses in music and the arts who have inspired the world, by the people's pride in home and neighborhood here, here they intend to dispossess us of the city we know and love. They have carved out the heart of it for their own uses and left the rest to wasteland. By any devious ploy they intend to take the river and the lakes, all the water. They will take the cultural treasures. They will appropriate the artists, luring them from the path of truth-telling. They have already bought the politicians and the religious leaders. They will write the stories and then hand them to the news editors to print. They have taken our schools and devastated our children. They intend to silence the righteous in a strategic corporate terrorism. They intend to leave us hanging in the air, uprooted, displaced. Who recognizes evil? in khaki slacks, navy sports coat, and tie, like our governor. Who can grasp quickly that those appearing so familiar mean to scatter us to the winds without work, without food, without homes? Who can take all that in? So hard to fathom, though this new treachery may be, we must be clear-eyed and resolute. We must sing our song again and summon the will to stand like those proud 19th century African men and women in Detroit who in the face of relentless intimidation built churches and schools and mutual aid societies and harbored those running to Canada for freedom. Like the sweet Dr. Ossian who said, I will defend my home and family from organized violence. Like our grandfathers and fathers who fought for dignity in the plants and the right to unionize to protect the value of their labor. Like all the freedom fighters who made the way for us in this city, we must stand. We must stand. We must keep on choosing to root ourselves in the soil of that legacy that cannot be ripped out of us. A memory of how to stand in the earth of our own humanity. 
to hold our footing in the ground of love that sustains everything and stand, stand like a tree planted by the water, like Detroiters of old, like the people of a city planted by the water. We shall not be moved. We will stand. We will stand. We will stand. All right, we will stand.
That's pretty good, pretty good.
How you be? Hey man. All right, bro.
contrived by the emergency manager, by um, uh, Governor Snyder, um, the, the idea that you can make the water uh, system more attractive to hawk and, and, and to sail by actually uh, uh, collecting the, these people who are in slow pay and no pay situations. You know, but, but what it brings to the surface is that you know water is essential. You know, water is an absolute requirement to life. You know, so it's good to see a good cross section of this community to come out. It's good to see that there is some national folks, national focus on this thing, and it really shows the inhumanity associated with the, um, this uh, um, grand bargain and and, and this um, bankruptcy that we're being faced with. Well, you know, I even heard of some cases where after they turn the people's water off, then the DHS come in and remove the children from unsanitary conditions. Well, that, that's, that's been the case for actually some time. So you're actually uh, uh, creating, I, I guess, a, a whole nother flow of income in, in, into um, a governmental agency. But absolutely, uh, I mean, but, but it's the contradiction that you deal with. By their very act, they are, are, are emphasizing just how important water is to life. You know, but 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 there, there are so many other stops along the way before you can get to the point of taking somebody's child out of their home. And this thing was not thought out. I'm surprised that even uh, uh, Governor Snyder and Kevin Orr uh, did, didn't think about it because they have been in a fight. You know, th th this has been a death match. You know, ever since they came here to Detroit, and they have been met with resistance every step of the way. For them to think that they could just arbitrarily cut off water, you're talking about cutting off water 3,000 people a week. Wow. 
you know, this is extraordinary. Uh, it, it, it's why the uh, um, the UN the UN has made a statement and has gotten uh, somewhat involved. It is because of the inhumanity of it, and it's all because these folks want to lease or sell the water system. That's what it's all about, and that's really what it's about. It, it is it, it is capitalism, yes. You know, but but if you don't get capitalism and you marry that with some kind of humanity, then it, 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 it becomes. Uh, I think they do. They marry with barbarism. But that's what it is, isn't it? That's exactly what it is. So, all right. Well, thank it's you. Good what, to see folks out here. Today. What a fitting backdrop. Spirit of Detroit. That's right. And General Motors. And then, as we cross the street, Joe Lewis's fist that says we're going to fight this thing. All right. Yes. Right on. Thank you. Turn the water on now. Get up. Get down. Turn the water on now. Get up. Get down. Turn the water on now. Get down. Turn the water on now. Get up. Get down. Turn the water on now. Get up.
will march from here to Lansing, That's right. from Detroit to Lansing, That's right. until we get justice right. for those at the bottom who don't have one or one.
should be Detroit. You're out of your names, the hundreds of thousands of petition signers. Call out President Obama to declare a public health emergency. Here's the number.
refusing to release them until they're arraigned, and that could possibly be Monday. So we're asking those that are willing to do something more radical than even what you've done right now to join us at Mound Detention Facility. Yeah.
Put your pitchforks 